want to sing songs of praise this morning to our great God, this is Graves into Gardens, and only He can turn all things together for good. So let's sing to Him. I searched the world, but it didn't fill me. Jesus. Make us like you, we pray. Amen. We lift our hands to you, for you deserve the praise. With open hearts before you, in wonder of your praise. Lay our lives before you. 
submit to your authority. We ask that you teach us and change us. All God's people said, Amen. Good morning and welcome to worship. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Today we celebrate the third Sunday after the Epiphany. Our focus is on our gospel reading for today from Mark chapter 1, where we read the account of Jesus calling his first disciples. Our theme is God's vision for discipleship. May God bless our worship this day and our lives of, his, of discipleship to his glory and for the blessing of many others. Let's begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Old Testament reading this morning is from the third chapter of the book of Jonah. Then the word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and call out against it the message that I tell you. So Jonah arose and went to Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly great city, three days' journey in breadth. Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's journey, and he called out, Yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. 
and the people of Nineveh believed God. They called for a fast and put on sackcloth from the greatest of them to the least of them. When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil way, God relented of the disaster that he said would do to them, and he did not do it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hey, Alfred, doesn't this game remind you of that one gospel reading we read earlier? Which one? The one where Jesus is walking across uh, the across the river, and he, and then he's telling the, the men in the boats to go fish for men. Wait a minute, so you mean you catch them in a net? No, I mean like, well, I mean like, imagine the net is, is uh, kind of like the gospel, and then people are catching uh, other people in it. Oh, uh, it's like the net is like God's word and they're catching the men in it? Yeah, kind of, something like that. I have a prayer here that that maybe we can say together. You want to help me? Sure. Dear God, thank you for the love of Jesus. Help us to follow him and know what that means. Help us to share his love with one another. Thank you. Thank you that we can be his disciples too. Thank you for your love. We love you, God. In Jesus' name, amen. We confess our faith together using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Well, as we continue in the year of vision, let us sing our theme song for the year as we really uh, make this our prayer. We want God to give us exactly what he wants, whatever vision, whatever wisdom, whatever um, plan and purpose, his will we want for our lives. So let's uh, make this song our prayer. This is God, I look to you.
promises and that we can trust you. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. After John was arrested, Jesus came into Galilee, proclaiming the gospel of God and saying, The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Passing alongside the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, the brother of Simon, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you become fishers of men. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. And going on a little farther, he saw James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, who were in their boat, mending the nets. And immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired servants and followed him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Dearly loved and precious children of God, brothers and sisters in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Last Sunday, we inaugurated and dedicated this year to be the year of vision at Zion Lutheran Church. This focus builds upon the momentum of the last two years, that is, respectively, the year of the Bible and the year of the walk. In a very real sense, the year of vision is intended to help us to seek and to see God's vision, God's plan for our mission and ministry, in a post-COVID world, and in an age and a culture which is changing all the time, all around us. If all that sounds complicated, it is. Complicated, but with God, not impossible. The good news is that the most important things have not changed. God still loves this world he created. God rescued and redeemed this fallen world by his grace through the death and resurrection of his son, Jesus Christ. God still sends his spirit into this world, into the hearts of men, women, and children by his word and through his sacraments to work in hardened or hurting hearts, forgiving sins, bringing redemption and renewal, and restoring people to himself by grace through faith in Jesus. The Bible uses a single word for that process by which God reaches people and restores them to himself, effecting in them his gifts of hope, life, and peace in Christ. That one word in the Bible is discipleship. Today in our gospel reading from the Gospel of Mark, we are given an insight into God's vision for discipleship. Join me for these next several minutes as we enter Mark's gospel, looking in the first chapter at what we learn about discipleship. The first thing we learn about discipleship is that it always begins at God's initiative. This is a matter of God's gracious call. This is God's work. The first priority of Jesus' ministry is to proclaim the good news that God's promise to send a Savior into the world has been fulfilled. And it is fulfilled in him, in the person of Jesus Christ, walking on earth, talking with people, bringing hope and healing in the message and life of the good news he lives and brings to all. Mark reports that the gospel proclaimed by Jesus was this. The time is fulfilled, 
and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. The good news is that God came in Christ, ushering in his kingdom, forgiving sins, reclaiming and restoring and renewing broken and hurting lives, bringing to hearts and lives throughout the world the forgiveness of sins, life and salvation through the person and work of Jesus Christ. And by God's gracious call and in the power of his spirit, his call and his words have an effect in us. And by his grace, we repent of our sins and believe the good news. In Mark chapter 1, we see how simple and yet how powerful this process is. As Jesus calls his first four disciples, in these seven verses, we read that Peter, that Jesus saw Simon and Andrew, his brother, and he said to them, follow me. And Mark reports immediately they left their nets and followed him. Going on a little farther, Jesus saw James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother. Mark tells us immediately he called them. And they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired servants and followed him. It isn't complicated. It is God's work for us and in us, drawing us to himself. The pull and the call of God's love is so gracious, so inviting so pure, so winsome, that it draws the soul in need to find hope and peace in the presence of the Savior. This is God's work, and it is our privilege to be a part of it, to be extensions of that gracious invitation, to be pulling down any walls that would separate people from God's gracious love for them, and to be infusing the world with that mercy and grace and hope in Jesus Christ, that as we proclaim and live the gospel call of Jesus Christ, God's Spirit would work through God's call to draw sinners to repentance and broken people to trust and find confidence in the healing of Jesus for them. Our daily walk and our loving witness are empowered by God's word and spirit to draw others to the Savior. This leads to the second thing that we learn about discipleship from Mark chapter 1. You see, discipleship really consists of two different activities happening at the same time. The first is following Jesus. That's what Simon and Andrew did, and James and John. The second activity, at the same time, is inviting others to join us as we follow Jesus. This is exactly what Jesus meant when he said to Simon and Andrew, follow me and I will make you fishers of souls. Following Jesus is not a private commitment. But it is a public confession, a proclamation of good news to be shared with everyone. It's not, God has given me these gifts, and I'll go off in my little corner, and I'll enjoy them for my benefit. It is, God has so loved me in Christ and graciously given me the gifts of his love that I may take these gifts and share them with everyone that I meet that God may use me by his grace to be an ambassador for Christ. So discipleship is following and constantly inviting others to follow Jesus with us, discovering the hope and the peace and the joy for which people are so desperately looking and can only be found in Jesus Christ, the gift of God to all the world. 
we graciously invite others to join us in tasting and seeing that the Lord is good and that his tender mercies are new every morning. As I have said before, and I'll probably be saying again, the details of the future at this point are uncertain to us. There are a lot of moving pieces right now. And we don't know exactly where those pieces are going to move and how quickly or how slowly they're going to move. We don't know exactly what life in a post-COVID world is going to look like or what new opportunities will present themselves for us to be at work in God's kingdom, achieving his mission and ministry with word and sacrament. But God's vision for discipleship remains unchanged. God is still calling sinners to repentance and inviting hurting people to receive healing and hope in Jesus Christ. He has invited us to follow Jesus, and he constantly reminds us to invite others to follow Jesus as we follow him. Today as well, the call of God goes forth to us and through us to others. Follow me, and I will make you fishers of souls. In this year of vision of Zion Lutheran Church, may God so renew our faith and restore our joy and empower our witness that his gracious love for us in Christ spills over to everyone we meet and with all with whom we come in contact, that his call to follow Jesus may go out into all the world for the glory of God and the salvation of many precious souls. In the name of Jesus, amen. Now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and our minds through faith in Christ Jesus to life eternal. Amen. As we respond to the call to be disciples, to follow him, let's make this song our anthem. I'm giving up. Everything I want till dear I count as loss All I wanted, all I think I need I lay at your feet I lay at your feet To follow you
You have the words of life. We have no one else. So help us to trust you, obey you, and follow you. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Heavenly Father, you desire not the death of a sinner, but that all would repent and believe the gospel. In the epiphany of your Son, your time of salvation and your kingdom have come near. As this world passes away, give faithfulness and urgency to your church to proclaim the gospel of Christ to all people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of the harvest, as you called Simon Peter and Andrew, James and John, to follow you and made them fishers of people, so send us as faithful witnesses of your gospel in our time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Eternal Lord, in view of every current distress, as the present form of this world passes away, give constancy and contentment to your people. Give us comfort and faithfulness that we may be free from anxiety and attend to holiness in body and spirit, undividedly devoted to you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, Preserve our nation with its rulers. Watch over our president, our governor, and all who serve for the good of this people at every level of government. Preserve us in peace and quietness as we work for justice for all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, turn from us every distracting anxiety and the dealings of this world that would draw our hearts away from your blessed gospel and its goal, which is eternal life. We especially pray for those who are recovering from COVID, including Eleanor Tyson, and also the mother, sister, and brother-in-law of Sharon Murphy, namely Pat, Susan, and Jim. And we pray for Glenn Pominek, who is recovering from successful rotator cuff surgery, and for Merritt Bartlett, Evelyn Ekstrand, and Tom Poole, who are also recovering. Bless them all with patience, strength, and full healing according to your gracious will. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for those who are mourning the loss of loved ones, including Bill Keep and his family, as they mourn the loss of his brother, Barney Keep, on January 10th in Portland, Oregon, due to congestive heart failure. Grant them your comfort and peace through Christ, who rose in victory over death and the grave for us. Lord, in your mercy hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling 
and to present you blameless before the presence of his glory with great joy to the only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, be glory, majesty, dominion, and authority before all time and now and forever. Amen. All right, let's sing our closing song once again. Here we go. Give him the glory. <laughs> Jesus. And have a great week, everybody. God bless.